Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 2 of Create Above and Beyond, a mod pack by Simi Bobby. Well, in the last episode we explored a lot and we found a great base location, like I'm just overjoyed and happy with that. Then we just started some basic stuff and then I went in my non-time lapse time lapse, I'm still not sure that I've included it. I'm recording those back to back because that's how I like doing new, new series, I like it recording two episodes and then splicing them together and seeing what it looks like. So uh, in that time lapse that might not be a time lapse, I basically planted a lot of trees to get a lot of wood. Uh, I went to get some sand, some clay, some gravel, and I've made this farm. And this farm is just a very temporary setup so that I have a little bit of food and a little bit of startup. And I'm going to remake my farm in a different way pretty soon. So today, today, I want to start processing ores. Now, if I come here, I didn't go mine all that much, but I wanted to at least get some ore mined because although I have this right here, I do want to show you that it's feasible. Like I think I, I time-lapsed or recorded an hour and got all of this in the hour. Don't need the copper, don't need the gold right now, don't need the crushed iron immediately. So we're going to start processing some, um, we're going to start processing the ore. First thing first, we need a millstone. So millstone is made from two andesite alloy, a cogwheel, a stone or like something cooked and a plank. So first thing first, uh, sleep? No. Just need to make sure that I don't pass through the time for sleeping. I know I have like, I think I have, yeah, I have one granite here. I'm just going to cook this one granite. That's going to be the polished item that I'm going to use. And we did make a little bit of andesite alloy in the last episode, which I don't even remember why we did it. But what's really important is this. I'm going to grab only like, I'm going to try to do the minimal amount that I need until I have a better recipe. Let's sleep and get back up. Great. So technically, millstone, we still need andesite alloy. Now to make andesite alloy, there's this recipe that makes two. So it's basically two stacks of algal and two stack of andesite makes two stacks of andesite alloy. There's a better recipe here. There's one and one for two. That's where we want to get as soon as possible, which is why I'm saying we're going to make just a little bit for now. So I'm going to make 64 for now. If we need a bit more, I'll make a bit more, but I don't intend to go further. Oh, I was about to forget something. First thing first, one stack of clay, one stack of gravel, one stack of sand. We're going to transform that into grout because we're going to have to cook the grout and as you guys know cooking grout takes a while so like this and like this we've got grout 64 here 64 here that started cooking it's going to be for tinker melter and by the way i did make some glass in my time lapse because cooking like i don't want to waste time on cooking during an episode so we now have andesite at plenty and we need cogwheels. So I'm basically going to make half a stack of cogwheel. So let me grab some wood and I'm going to transform that into a stack and that into a stack of button. Ooh, how much is that going to make? Nope. Redistribute, perfect, like this. And well, my half a stack went to a stack. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just going to come back right here and this time I'm going to make this into buttons and this into plank and now I want to make large cog wheels. So let me just search for cog wheels so I can make the large ones like so, 16. Okay, not so bad. I'm, I'm okay with that. So now we need some mil uh, a millstone. Millstone we can finally make, oh, we need one wood, one wood. You know, let's grab this and this just so I have a little bit on me and let's make the millstone now. And voila, we've got one millstone. 
Let me put it down and show you for a second. So the mistal is like this and you throw items in the top, but it needs to turn and it needs to turn with a gear like that. Okay. So we need rotational power. Now there is such a thing as a hand crank, but that's for noobs. I'm going to go straight to uh, power. So one, two, three, four, 24 slab around three large cog wheels is going to give me three water wheel. And now welcome to the very temporary setup. I'm just going to get a setup to be able to get started, but I'm going to immediately, um, I'm going to move it maybe underground. Like I don't think, I think I want to spend as little time as possible in the overworld because as you guys always know, rain, rain, and rain. I, I don't want to have to deal with rain. Um, perfect. What? Sorry, I had a notification. <sighs> People don't respect your recording time. You don't tell them you're recording and they don't respect the fact that you didn't tell them and they just contact you for no reason. Isn't that annoying? Okay, so joke aside, we're going to put the water wheel down like this. Okay, you can connect up to three water wheel and the water is going to go down this way. So we're going to clear the front. You need to clear at least those two space for better water flow. For the back, even though it's clipped in the ground, this still works. Why? How? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It works. So because I want to make things cute and because I got some iron, I'm going to just go ahead and get a little chisel oh, right here. And yeah, you heard me say make something cute, which makes no sense compared to what I usually do. But hey, I'm trying to turn a new leaf. So we're going to want the water to go down this way. So we're going to make a water backdrop like this. And it's really that simple. Now, if you remember in my list, I want to make four bucket. And if you guys are asking, wondering why there's two sets of buckets uh so technically technically because i don't want to waste any iron i would be manually cranking at this point what's the cost of a manual crank manual oh no not manual just crank oh my god crank get it yes perfect so that's super inexpensive so let's just do a crank so i can at least show you that so first we're going to need some bearings and then we're going to need some planks and then we can make one end crank. We can put one cog wheel right here and can I connect the end crank directly here? Yes, perfect. So technically I need two buckets, which means I need six iron. Well, I only really need one bucket. So let's just make it simpler on myself. Grab three crush iron and we're going to put the three crush iron in here and then we're just gonna end crank this and yeah that takes a bit of forever but honestly this is you you don't want to waste any iron whatsoever it's too expensive well all nines are nine are cranked which means which means this technically if we just cook that if we cooked it straight we would get nine nugget if we washed it we would get uh, 18 nugget but if we melt it, we're going to get uh, three ingot. Okay, so let's make the melt uh, the smeltery. So let me grab this and this. So now we're at the smeltery phase. I'm going to grab five glass for now, and we're going to get started. So first thing that we need to do is a heater, seared heater like this. Then we need to make a, uh, sorry, a I don't remember the name seared fuel gauge. And from the sear fuel gauge, we make the seared melter. Then we need at least one uh, spout, no faucet, and we need one table. And if you remember, I told you which it was super important. We need at least one gold. So let's grab this one gold that we're going to throw in and oh, also process and then we're going to be able to set up our smeltery. Perfect. This is done. And I'm going to put the smelter right here for now. 
everything is currently temporary but that's what I'm going to do for now so let's do this and this and now we're going to need a little bit of coal or or charcoal anything just one bit for now put that in and put put that in and put the three gold you need one more sear brick to put down here but these three makes one ingot so now one crushed equal one ingot and that to me is the only acceptable form so now let's do this and the moment it's finished three more I just trying to get the best out of my uh, charcoal then I can start smell I can start casting into ingot that's one ingot two ingot and three ingot now for because I'm making a video and I want to save a little bit of time I assume I've processed so these 54 is equal to 54 iron so let me just grab all of that iron and assume that it's been processed to the manual cranking one at a time and now we can make two buckets I don't really need two buckets but to be honest you, you guys all know how this works we need an infinite water source we need to carry water around and it's just so much easier to have two buckets than having to travel back and forth between those two points could have put my water wheel closer to the water that would have also have been a plan but obviously that's not what I chose to do so let me just do this so I have water really close by I'm gonna make another water infinite water source grab this corner here corner here and corner there and we now have rotational power super nice now we're going to put a shaft right here and we're going to put a large cog wheel like so okay then we're going to put a small cog wheel in the corner here so as you can see this is going faster now if I put another large cog wheel here and another small cog wheel right here now I'm way faster okay so now that I've done this what I want is to power this millstone unfortunately as you can see we're not facing the right direction so super simple what we need to do is we need to make a gearbox right here so gearbox are made with four cog wheel and andesite casing we haven't made andesite casing yet so let's make 16 andesite casing oh that's 32 well let's make way too many again and let's put four cog wheel around and we get our gearbox we want to change it into a vertical gearbox so and it's time to sleep again let's just wait a moment and come back so now that we've got a vertical gearbox if I put it here as you can see there's a bottom part right here which I can put a gear on and now we have grab the millstone and we can now automate the gear, millstone like this and voila now I'm gonna come back here I'm going to grab my iron and my gold and I'm going to need a little step up block let's use some dirt because I still need to throw this on on top of it so let's put the two gold and the iron and now you can see if I click I got six gold and three iron if I click again I now have 12 iron so I can start coming back here and doing the manual job I don't really want to do the manual job for now I'm just going to let this process so that I get as much iron as possible and we'll get back to that in a moment okay so we now have a not and cranked way of getting the crushed iron or gold or whatever copper whatever other material and we have the melter here the problem is this is not automated which means I need to sit next to it and babysit it well we're going to go to the next step if I come back here to the overview and look at this we've made the millstone we've made the seared melter I don't even remember if read this preparations careful before you are ready to embark on the journey of automation it can help to set up a basic work workshop first here are some recommendations for successful start well yeah I, I've done that I've done I'm starting successfully next step I'm going to want is mechanical press for a mechanical press I need nine iron 
in an andesite machine in a smitting table. Smitting table needs two iron and oop. how do I go back to this like this? Let's just search this way. It's going to be easier. So now for the mechanical press, we need nine iron. We need an andesite machine. So we need 11 iron right now and an andesite machine. Okay, this in itself is going to be a semi nightmare. So let me come back here and we have our iron that's pre-processed and we're going to get started on the andesite machine. Let me come back here and the site. Oh, well, I say that, but just give me a moment and the site machine. So first thing first, sorry, we're going to make the, um, the, I don't remember the name, this, the smithing table. I, you, oh, no, okay. I thought I might have one because smithing table is something you can find in a village. I'm going to put the smithing table right here. Perfect. Now we need the andesite machine. So to make an andesite machine, you need andesite casing, which we already have, and eight kinetic mechanism. Kinetic mechanism have two way of being made with a sequence assembly and two andesite alloy and a saw or manually. At this point, we have to do it manually. So it's going to be with a stone. Well, with a saw of any level, this gets used so little that I'm going to go with a stone saw. Okay. It, it, I mean, if I was putting in an assembly machine, I would probably put something stronger, but right now we're good with stone sauce. I'm going to grab this and I must have a, what's it called? A flint somewhere. Yeah. So grab one flint so I can go flint, three stone rod and two stick and we get a stone saw. Now stone saw with cog wheels with oak log, you know, I want more oak log. I'm going to make 16. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make 16. So oak log, cock wheeled, stone saw, and andesite alloy gives us 16 kinetic machine. And kinetic machine around an andesite casing is going to give me two andesite machine. Now we can make our block of iron. And if we go in the smitting table, one andesite machine in one stone block gives us a mechanical press. So now if I come right here, I'll put it on this side. I can put a mechanical press right here. The mechanical press is used to make plates, but it needs, you can't just throw one iron on the ground here and have it just work. It's not how they work. So if I come back here, I'm just going to show you one quick second. If you use, if you make a mechanical press, it needs a depot. Okay. So, uh, so that's a deployer. Sorry. So it can be a basin, but not for plates. If you want to make plates, it has to press on some, oh, it's not showing it. Huh? So I saw that in a video. What, you know what? <sighs> sorry. I just couldn't stand the, the, the the bird sound again. So let's just put that here and let's continue. So now I need a depot. Okay. Depot are very simple. They're basically one andesite casing with one andesite alloy. So now I can come back here and I can put this down right under and now we can start making plates. The reason we want to do that is we want to move to the next step. So the next thing we want to make is the mechanical mixer. To make a mechanical mix mixer, we need an another andesite machine. We've made two, so we're good. And we want a whisk. A whisk is five iron sheet and two andesite alloy. So let's grab one, two, three, four, five. Put that right here and boom. So one, two, three, four, and five. And it's going fast because of how much I accelerated the gear process. Like I don't want to wait hours and hours. So yes, I'm going to accelerate as much as Aww. is possible for now. So that gives me a whisk and Aww. in again, in the spinning table, one andesite machine and one whisk gives me a mechanical mixer. And if I come here, I also need a basin and basin Aww. super simple. It's five andesite like this. So, if I come down here, where am I going to put this? 
Oh, I can put it right next to it. So I'm going to put that right here and this right here. And we can now make and decide for half the cost. So that's why like that was super important to get done ASAP because whatever is a waste of material is a waste of material. We're going to put half a stack and half a stack. Oh, nope. Just give me a second. This is not where it goes. I had completely forgotten that this is also kind of the, the weird rotational power. So we're going to, oh, overstressed. Okay. What that means is that we're using too much power from this one water wheel. And the only reason we're using too much power is because we've over, like we've up geared it. Okay. So we're going to get a little something else done. Let me come back here and grab one charcoal and come back. We're going to get ourselves another uh, one gold ingot. So like this and like this, we're going to get ourselves, like I just said, a gold ingot. So melt this and then I'm just going to, to save on the uh, fuel. Oh, I'm so derpy. I, I'm sorry guys, that was really derpy. I kind of went off script because I was too excited about getting more andesite but there's something else that I need to do first. So let me just get the most out of my, uh, out of my charcoal right here. And then we're going to continue with what I was actually supposed to do. Wow. I don't know how that worked, but it worked. Okay. So we were at the step where I want to odd, well, not automate, but more automate more this. Wow. That's word sentence. So I'm going to grab two iron that I'm going to put in here and I'm going to grab myself two plates. In Create, there is a very dumb thing called a chute. So it's basically two iron sheet and two endocyte alloy. Oh, other way around makes four chute and four chute are just used to drop things into other things. And it's really not smart. So it doesn't really understand or differentiate between a uh, completed item and non-completed item. So you have to be careful in which situation you use it. So let's make two chests and we're going to come right here, dig under, Let me grab all of this. And then we're going to put one chest. Nope. I need these chests to connect. Perfect. And I'm going to put a shoot. Fortunately, the seared casting table is smart enough not to think that they need to go over each other. Then I kind of forgot. I'm going to need a third chest. So let me grab a third chest like so. And let me grab half of this charcoal. So now I'm going to mm, let me do one last step of automation. First, I'm going to need a lever like so and a cobblestone. Oh, I think, th yes, this works. So see, now it's automatically pushing and getting grabbed by the dropper and put in the large chest. So now I'm gonna sleep, uh, still can't sleep. So I'm going to try and rush the last, the next step of setup. Next step of setup is a chute right here and a chest right here. And then I can put all of this in here. So this drops into the melter automatically, gets melted put into an ingot and drop down to a chest. So it's not fully automated in the sense that I still need to load one place and bring it to the other place. That's why it's a st temporary setup, but this is automated enough that we can just work with this. I want to check something quickly. If I remove this and I come back to placing this right here. Oh yes. Okay. So at least I can temporarily do this part. So what I'm going to do is put the basin right here. And then I'm going to put again, half a stack of each. So half a stack and half a stack is going to give me a full stack of andesite and the other half stack is going to give me another stack. So this is just going to mix like that. And once it's completely finished, it's going to go back up and I'm going to be able to get the stack. And there's no point putting more because if you put more and there's no output, when you grab with your end, you're going to grab everything that's in there. So great. 
Also, uh, since I made the chute, let's just do the same thing here. If I come down here and I make more, oh, if I make more chests, well, oh, whew, I have enough. I, I don't know if I had gotten enough plank, which was a worry for me because I didn't want to have to waste time going to make some, uh, getting some wood. So I'm going to remove these two parts right here. Put a chest down here and again, a chute. And fortunately for us, this millstone is smart enough to know not to drop the the, uh, the item that it's crushing. It's dropping only what is processed. So this is going f strong. And now we just need to do the same thing. Shoot on top, chest on top, and voila. So we've also semi-automated this. If I grab the copper and I go up here, now whatever I come back from mining, I can throw all of my crushed item in here and it's just going to go and get processed and then I need to transfer it here. So what I'm going to be missing is bringing this to this. Technically, and that would be dumb, I could put this above here in a big column. Well, I feel really dumb saying that it would be dumb. It probably would be a good idea in the beginning where you're kind of stuck. I might reset that up like that for the next episode in my time lapse, depending on how much ore I want to process. But you know what? It's one of those things where I figure out after that it wouldn't be that dumb of an idea. It makes for a very high tower, and then I would need to bring power up here, but it would work. Okay, so these two things are done, and now andesite is going to be way easier like this. Also, those villagers that keeps hmm and hmm around, probably going to build a fence because they're annoying me just a tiny little bit. Okay, back to what we were doing. So now we have our semi, well, we have processing of iron one to one, of any ores one to one, which is, you need to do this, else you're just wasting so much time trying to process stuff. Uh, let me grab these cooked fish and continue. So what's the next step? If I come here, I've automated all of, I've done all of these. Okay, next step would be an encased fan, wrench, and mechanical saw. Fortunately, we cannot do mechanical saw. For a mechanical saw, we need andesite machine with a saw blade, and a saw blade requires lead ingot. So that's something that in my time lapse, I'm going to have to go and get. I'm going to have to go down, and let me just show you right now. If I add lead ore right here, it tells me that lead ore has a 1.1% chance of being found between level 1 and 20. So for sure, I'm going to have to go downstairs and down, like, which is why I wanted this. Like, I didn't want to have to uh, dig 68 block down. Like, I, I have an easy shaft access. And I'm just going to have to go and try and find some lead. Uh, yeah, so that's something that I'm going to do for the next episode. And ideally, I'm going to want a certain amount of lead to be able to get started with more automation. I just don't know how many yet. So one thing at a time. Also, I, I'm going to assume that I mined for more gold because when I went downstairs, uh, I didn't spend any time in the last time lapse really mining, but I want to make two things that require gold. I want to make the wrench, which is three gold plate, a cogwheel and a stick. And, oh, I don't need five gold. I need just four gold. So I'm going to grab the four gold and grab all of this. And then because of our situation, I just need to remove that temporarily. Then connect this temporarily. And now we can make our four gold. Again, in my time lapse, I'm probably going to make a second water wheel. And with a second water wheel, we'll be able to power the other stuff that we need. So we got these four golden sheets. Oh, they're not called plate. They're called sheets. Sorry. So with these golden sheets, we're going to be making this wrench right here. Like so. And the beauty of the wrench is this. With a wrench, if you shift right click, you just remove the stuff. And even though I was a bit far away, they go directly in your end. So yeah, that's really amazing. 
Now, the reason I wanted the extra golden sheet is I also want to make the engineer's goggle because that's going to give us information about what we're seeing. So if I come here, I'm going to need two glass and then I need one string. Uh, hmm? Okay, I don't have any strings, so simple solution for now. Going to make a sword and we're going to go underground and we're going to just break one of those uh, web right here. One string, we're good. So now we can go back upstairs and just string it. So if I come back here, I can now make it uh, this with two glass with the string. Engineer's goggle that you put on your head. And now if I come here and I look at this, this is providing 256 SU. Each, uh, each generator is giving this. And if I come here, this is at that speed using 512. So just, just that piston is using two water wheel. And this millstone is using <laughs> the third water wheel. So that's kind of why we're screwed. When I put another machine here, it's another 256, which is too much and it can no longer continue working. Whew. So next thing is the encase fan. I do want to make two encase fan. Like if I can make three, I'll make three, but I need at least two. So I'm going to need iron sheets and I'm out of, no, I'm not out of iron because yay, this is all done. I'm going to bring 12 iron to this. And while we're waiting, I'm going to go and make my endocyte uh, machine. So I'm going to need 8, 16, 24. 24 of this with 24 of this. Oh, sorry. So, oh, and by the way, you can just, you don't need to be properly like the recipe works any which way. So if I go like this, like this and like this, just need to be careful not to shift right click because I only want 24 for now perfect and with the 24 I can now make three endocyte machine with these three endocyte machine I just need my fan blades now so if I come here and grab this I'm gonna be able to make three fan blade and three encase fans so fan blade like this with endocyte alloy in the center well sorry propeller not fan blade and we can make three in case fan. You know what? I'm kind of screwed at this point. I'm going to need another water wheel. So four of those like this. And let's make one, two, three water wheel. Voila. And then we can just go and set up, make another setup right here. Just going to put it in front. Doesn't really matter. And one, yeah, that's in the right or uh, right direction. One, two, three. We're going to need to break down right here so that the water flows. 256 is the max you can get. And the setup that I've made and showed you is the absolute best setup to get that kind of speed. So that's to hold the water in. So I, oh, I'm missing one piece, but I'm really not going to worry about that. We're going to be changing that, putting it in another place later. As long as I'm in a situation where water doesn't go all over my base, I'm happy with that. So now, oh, this was not my smartest move. Okay, so I'm just going to have to jury rig a little something like this. Is it passing around? I'm not sure. So, no, it doesn't go there. You know what? Arr. Can I put it like this? I don't know. This. Okay. So, how do I do this? I'm going to go sleep and I'm going to make a di directional gearbox and I'm going to move away from this position because it's too annoying. <clears throat> So, gearbox right here. How do I make a gearbox again? It's one of these with four round. One, two, three, four. 
perfect and I want to make some uh, oak pressure plates so one two one two so it's going to be I'm just trying to build it in my head so that's one space two space I need a third space here so I need two more okay it's going to make more sense when I show you but I have an idea so what I'm going to do right here is put a gearbox like this and then I can just use a shaft and go this direction which is going to solve all of my problems for the time being I'm just going to remove some grass right here and then I need to put my in-case fan and just because it's going to be easier I'm gonna make three gearbox so come back right here and I want three gearbox new no. darn it okay so I need a bit more gears which means I need a bit more buttons so let me make 64 buttons uh yeah 64 buttons and oh 64 buttons I said around eight andesite alloy which gives me 64 gear wheel I can make my third one like so and we're going to go and make the setup so by bringing it down this way I can put one right here and I can extend it and put one right here just make some more space like so and another one right here and extend it again perfect so we have three gear box and we can now put three encased fan oh no this one's in the wrong direction hmm uh is no so that doesn't work how can i do this cleanly um i don't know how i can do this cleanly i this is annoying i wanted all of them to be blowing in the same direction well i know how to do it i just don't like it oh, this is going to be so ugly you know what i'm going to find a way of doing it better for the time being i'm just going to make two more gearbox one two and one two one two one two one two perfect and we're just going to go which means we're going to now need more plates so i'm going to need nine plates and let's go down this way with a shovel and we just need to do the same thing a bit further and the fact they're a bit further apart might not be such a bad thing in the end but you know whatever i'm gonna need to Go two more this way just going to complete the setup in a moment we should have prepared a bit more space I'm not like I need to terraform my base and that's something I'm gonna have to do probably in a longer time lapse I'm also going to need more shaft like so and so if I put this one here and change it yes they're all pushing in the right direction great so i can go like this like this and like this and what we want we want one fireplace one bucket of water and one bucket of lava let's just do that right now so if i come back here i'm gonna make one fireplace yes three like this and these two oh i'm not is it fire or fireplace i'm not sure to be honest can i do this yes perfect fireplace water and let's go downstairs get some lava and then i'm going to explain each different one so lava is going to be at the lowest level i think it's on this side oh, i'm not sure I know that I have lava downstairs. I just, nope, wrong side. 
Okay, so I just have to remember that completely the bottom is not the red side, it's the green side. So if I come down this way, I think that completely at the bottom. Urgh, not the green side, I'm going to try first. So does this bring me completely to the bottom? Oh, there is green, but it's not the first green that I see. And yes, that's that's the one that brings me to lava. Oh boy, get out! Oh, I almost died. Okay. Man, you're annoying. Oh, if you're going to stay stuck there, I'm going to like this. Okay, come. Come get killed too. Come on, you know you want it. Get stuck and get killed. Psh. Noob. Okay, let's get... I never grabbed my bucket of lava. Or I guess I placed it back down. I'm really lucky I didn't kill myself or didn't hurt myself with lava. Now let's get out of here because obviously we're not ready. Let's get out of here and we're going to go put a bucket of lava. So basically the reason I wanted three and I wanted to make three set up also in a time lapse going to replace all of this with stairs because there's no way that I'm going up the stairs like this annoyingly slow like that. I'm going to fix that again not in a time lapse or in a time lapse. I don't know what I'm going to call it. But now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to put lava. Okay. So we have three things, bulk washing, bulk blasting, and bulk cooking. And the difference is super important. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab me some great potatoes, which is why I made this beautiful farm. And don't worry, I'm going to replant everything. Let's continue and I'm going to show you something in a moment. I'm going to show you how each one of those work. Perfect. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to grab all of that and also going to... Oh, I got some food beans. These little beans, buddy beans, are food. I've got my potatoes. Oh, and I have one extra. I couldn't have asked for more. I'm super happy with that. I'm going to grab some wood and I'm going to show you what's going on. Now, this is bulk blasting. If I choke potato down here, it's going to blast it, but it's not going to cook it. It's going to destroy it because this is way too strong. See, disappeared. If I put some wood though, and here, this is cooking, not blasting. This campfire is going to cook these potatoes, and this blasting is going to give me charcoal. Ooh! And yet, yeah, never go in front. Oh, come on! Well, first death of the episode, of the series, and I wanted to try to never die. Great. Super great start, man. You did amazing. By the way, the, the corpse is going to, uh, it's just going to disappear once you've taken everything that's on the corpse. It's just going to despawn after a certain time. So this, you have to be super careful when you're picking up things. And right here, this... Oh, this also. Okay, so these two things I'm going to have to be more careful. But now we have cooked baked potatoes. And baked potatoes are a great food source. Now, the chemical washing. If you remember, we can chemical wash the dust. But I don't want to do that. I have no interest in washing dust. Instead... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two things that we can wash. I'm going to grab 11 gravel and whatever. So if I take the gravel and I throw uh, the sand first and I throw it down in here, it's going to get wash and I should probably, can I search washing? No, let's search encased fans, encased fans, bulk blasting, bulk smoking, bulk washing. So bulk washing sand has a 25% chance of giving you clay ball. So, oh wow, I really got unlucky with that batch. I only got two. But you can also wash gravel. So if I do this and I come back here and I show you, the gravel gets 
Oh. The gravel gets washed into 12% chance of two iron nugget and 25% chance of flint. And it's already transformed. And what did we get? We got three iron nuggets and we got five flint. So yeah, these three station. Now when I come back from upstairs, I'm going to give you another example right now. I want to make a more beautiful build. And for a more beautiful build, of course, Where's the monster? So what I'm going to do is run away a little bit because I don't want to break my base. Where are the monsters? I don't see them. Whew. Okay, so let's sleep over here. And I think I have a cave underground and I'm going to have to find where the mobs are. Oh, and never do this. You saw how I broke the bed because I wanted to bring it back in the house in my test world. One time, I broke the bed, and I didn't have a spawn point. And when I respawn, I respawn at the start of the map. So what I was trying to say is, this has zero cost. It's going to cook forever. It's never going to use up the um, the lava. So it's a great way of cooking, uh, making stone. So I can always just throw cobblestone right here, and cook the cobblestone into uh, what's it called? Cook the cobblestone into stone. The other thing I can do for infinite iron nugget is I can grab another stack of cobblestone and I can come to my millstone right here and I can um, mill the stone. The stone gets milled into gravel and if I wash the gravel, I know the percentage rate is not that great, but it's good enough that for a future setup, we can get infinite unlimited iron because we can make a cobblestone generator, mill it, throw it in the washing and get iron nuggies and some uh, flint. So that's a really great way of doing things. You know what? I'm just going to eat those two body beans to get rid of them because I don't want them in my inventory and finish with the baked potatoes. I love baked potatoes because of how easy they are to make and because of the cost. And like I was saying, right now, I don't need the furnace anymore. Anything that I can put in a furnace, I can either blast or smoke. So that's how I'm going to manage stuff from now on. Like, technically, if I come back here and... Ooh, do I have kelp? Okay, so give me a moment. We're going to go underwater for a moment. We're going to go grab some of our kelp that I replanted. So I basically replanted 64 kelp and I don't know how much I'm going to need to hit. Oh, ideally you don't want to break the bottom part because it means it's just going to regrow. I'm really curious how much kelp that's going to be. And because I don't want to be in the water forever, I'm just going to grab my boat. And I'm just going to go around like this and grab all of the kelp. This is way faster than just bobbing up and down in the water. I feel like that's going to be a couple of... Like, for whatever reason, I feel... Oh, I'm full. And I have four stacks. Okay, so that's going to be good for now. I'm going to let the rest despawn. I don't really care all that much right now. The only reason I wanted to do this was to show... To make a point... So if I put all of this in here and I come down here and grab a stack of clay. So if I go, okay, so I'm going to also show you something automation wise. So if you look at kelp, you can use two kelp and two clay to make four algal blend. Or you can use the mixer. One and one makes two. So here we're not gaining. We're not duplicating. The only advantage of doing it here is that we it would be automated for now we don't really care we're just going to grab the two stacks of algal blend right here and we're going to blast that so i'm going to come right here and drop these two stacks and voila Th like this is something that i really love getting on episode two because right now just because i got this on episode two we're going to save so much on charcoal we just have three lines whenever we need something we just come here we drop it in front of it and 
that's it. It's when we come back later. The problem is I can't really go down super far because it might despawn. I I don't I haven't set up a way of automatically collecting it yet. That's something that's going to come later. And if I come here and voila, just have to be careful not to kill myself. And do I have more endocyte? Uh, yes, I have another stack of endocyte. So stop being in my way. So now I'm going to remove this. I wish there was a easier. Oh, yeah, I'm being dubbed. Just going to grab this. Going to put it right here. Going to grab a shaft. Put it right here. And I'm going to grab the piston. Put it here. So when I don't want to have the kinetic impact, I can always just break this shaft. So now it's no longer part of our system. And because I didn't use the wrench, see it dropped on the other side. Now I can come back here and I can put the mechanical mixer. And I can just throw half a stack of this and half a stack of this in here. And I'm making more andesite. So right now I have better recipes for some stuff. I have semi-automated the melting of material and I've semi-automated the processing of uh, crushed into dust. So this is, and I've also semi-automated washing, blasting and cooking. That's a great second episode. Now, third episode. Third episode, we need to start with our farms. I don't want to have to farm wood. Uh, I don't want to have to farm clay because with washing of sand, we can get infinite clay and I don't want to uh, farm uh, kelp. So next episode is going to be farm. Just based on time right now, give me a second and check something quickly. Can I make... Oh, no, not like this. Do I have enough? Yeah, I have more than enough. 16. So 16, this, this, and this is going to give me 16 kinetic machines. These 16 kinetic machine like this is going to give me two more andesite. Ooh, I want more than this. So let me just make more because based on my list, I was just looking back at my list that I provided on the screen in the last episode. I just want a bit more machines. What am I searching for? Oh, log. Derp. And yes, I have enough log also. So now saw this, this, and logs. 32 more. Grab these 32 and make them into more endocyte machines. Perfect. So with these endocyte machine, as part of my list, I'm going to grab two of those. And two of those, oh, sorry. I'm going to grab two of those right here with, I'm just, where's my list? I changed the page. Just give me a second. So the two in the site machine with, oh yes. Okay. So first I need to grab six iron, six iron back here and six iron here. I need to make some, uh, great. Iron bar, sorry. So two in the site machine with two iron bar is going to give me two strainer bases. Okay. Strainer bases, a uh, very quick setup uh, like this. I'm going to grab again. This is going to be moved. Oh, that, that was super dumb of me. I don't know what I'm thinking. They cannot be touching. So I'm going to put the next one right here. So you put strainer base at the bottom right here and now you need a, a mesh, well, a strainer. So we're going to need to make a knife. So let me grab some, oh, I have flint on me. So if I use one flint and one stick, I'm going to make a knife and with a flint knife, which is why I didn't clean up my grass because I wanted to use the knife. I knew I was going to need to do that. By using a knife, you're getting seed, but you're also getting straw. Okay, so I think that I want 27 straw. I'm not quite sure because I didn't put that in my list. It seemed too simple of a material to put in my list. So I think that's going to be plenty enough. Let me come back here and you transform this straw into these rugs, a uh, canvas, 
we're going to need six of those yeah so we just got enough and the canvas around this is going to give me sediment strainer and can i make a second one what that has to be a visual bug right yeah it only made two and then you put one in here and one in here now it needs flowing water it, you can't just put water on top i think this is my understanding of it is that it's way more efficient with flowing water so i can put water right here and water right here and voila these sediment strainer are going to make clay orange sand white sand and sand and as you've seen the three sands wash into potential clay ball so technically this is clay ball semi-automated so we have kelp there that's very easy to go and gather but not automated we have this starting to make clay ball so that we never have to go anywhere else and also technically sand to be cooked into glass and what else do we have and wood while well, wood is still manual like I said, we still need to do a couple of things to no longer be manual. Right now, let's just get rid of all of this. I'm just trying to make a little bit of space. Grab this, grab this one. And do I dare? Oh my God, this episode is so long, but yes, 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 I dare. So let's come back here because that's something I should have done at the beginning of the episode. I just kind of forgot about it and moved on. So I want to get into a bit more tinker. First, we're going to sleep because tools, as you've seen, I've just been making new tools and new, like whenever my pickaxe break, I make a new one. Whenever my shovel break, I make a new one, but there's tinker in this pack. So I'm going to uh, grab a stack of oak plank, a stack of stick, and I'm going to make all of these patterns. And then we're going to make a part builder is that the one no tinker station and then we're going to make a part builder like so voila and now we're going to grab some cobblestone oh my god we don't have a lot left and for now because i'm running out of space i'm just going to put that outside so we're going to grab these patterns and we're going to make a tool binding a tool and two tool handles and then we're going to make a pickaxe head well we're going to make two pickaxe head and one axe head like so and then everything else we're going to make into repair kits okay because this is going to be the perfect setup we're also going to grab two diamonds and two emerald because we got them and the diamonds super important in my list if you remember i had said try and get a diamond because what we're going to do is we're going to make a pickaxe like so and this pickaxe is durability 130 it has a mining level of stone a mining speed of four but if i put a diamond on it it's now going to be mining level diamond so this one pickaxe replaces every other pickaxe i'm not going to need a better one than that for the time being and if on top of it i also add an emerald i now have a durability of 945 so this is going to last i thought i heard the mob sorry so next tool is going to be this uh, maddock a maddock is basically a shovel and a, an axe at the same time. So I can use this instead of making, um, instead of making, what's it called? Oh my God, words are hard. Instead of making shovels and instead of making more axe, I can just do this and use that. I'm going to want to make these tools faster at some point when we get redstone. But for the time being, I'm going to do this and this. And now we have either ability. But the reason I did this, the most important reason for this, is that right now, with the stone repair kit, I can go downstairs. So that's what I'm going to do right now, because that's what uh, I'm going to be doing at the, the end of this episode. We need lead. The next super important thing is lead. And lead is between level 1 to 20. And that's where I said the time lapse, non-time lapse is, I'm going to have to go and, and mine is it this side 
Oh god, I'm gonna die again. Darn it! <laughs> Can I eat on time? Nope! So yeah, I died again. This is super annoying, and I'm going to grab a couple of cobblestone. I thought I had explored the whole way down, and I thought I knew for sure that there was nothing dangerous. You know what? I'm just gonna grab a stack of dirt, because I don't see any cobblestone. I think I've cooked it all into stone. Let's go back downstairs, and I just wanted to show you how I was going to strip mine. Just give you a quick view of how I was going to be getting, trying to find gold and lead. And I'm really surprised. Which side did I go? I went to this side, yeah. So I really thought that I had found everywhere that was a problem, to be honest. So I'm kind of shocked that there were still some problematic spots. You... There's water on the other side. Can I get there on time? Oh, okay. So I'm no longer on fire. So I'm going to go on the other side. Somehow I feel that the other side might have been a smarter, safer choice. Let me just go right here and see. Oh, where am I going? Am I going all the way back to the top? Wasn't there two ways? If I go back down here, I thought there was a split cutoff way. Oh, yes, right here. Oh, there was water right here. Let's cut the water right here, and let's just go see what's going on down here. I'm going to replace my stuff properly, like so, and I'm ready to go down. Uh, I'm doing this because I want to light the way. Ooh. Okay, so no, this is not the side I want to be. I thought there was a place I had even seen gold, so it must be on the other side. So I'm going to go back down this way. And something happened here, and it kind of broke true. I don't know how that quite happened. And I'm at level 4. Let me go back up a little bit. Oh, yes, right here. Okay, gold. <laughs> That's what... Whew. So that's what I was saying. So let me just grab this gold quickly because now I have the right tool for the gold. Well, that's not going to be a problem. Let's go down here. And let's just protect my gold. Like so, because I don't want to take a chance of it falling in the lava. That's one, two, three, four, and five ingot of gold. Now, I don't want to go in this direction, because there's mobs spawning right there, and there's no mob that can come down from this way. So, see, I'd start strip mining right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go three high, and I'm going to go one, and then one, two, three, four, five. So that's six away, and I'm just going to break everything up to six away, like so. This is taking forever, and that's why. That's not going to make for an exciting episode. Put one torch down, then break one level, one layer, then up to it. One, two, three, four, five. Then break the top and bottom layer. So I'm just hoping that I'm going to find something. Strip mining another two minutes, one minute, just to show you. But that's why. Like I cannot see putting a time lapse of that, because... It feels like it's going to be very boring to watch. I don't know. Maybe leave a comment what you think because if I'm, there's a part of me that's really like, I've never skipped anything. So do I really start skipping stuff in this? Because you start doing it one time, you're going to do it forever. Like, I, I don't know. So really leaving an, an opinion would be really great. Oh, and it's already paid off. So technically... 
So technically, imagine that I'm doing this with a cobblestone pickaxe, like with this pickaxe, without a diamond. I've been strip mining for two minutes, and already we have diamonds. Okay, so I don't need diamonds right now. I'm gonna wait till I can put a looting enchant. If I need diamond, I know that there's some here, and there's sapphire ore right there, and I'm also getting andesite. But that's what I'm going to be doing in my maybe time lapse, maybe not time lapse, and I'm also getting iron. I'm just going to be strip mining, like go 30 or 40 down this way, okay, like this, and then just open up a new mine shaft because I like to walk back to where I was, put another torch here, prepare the next shaft, okay, so this is to me the most efficient way of doing it because Right here, I see all of the blocks here and all of the blocks here. I don't see this one. So if I start the next shaft right here, then I see this and this one and then the next one. So this is, if you don't want to skip anything whatsoever, that's really the best way. And technically in the past, what I've done when playing Minecraft before all the modern mind madness, one, two, three, four, five. So before all of the modern madness, what I used to do is do three large. The problem is, the reason I stopped doing that is this diamond vein, oh, it's, it's four deep, oh, it's too deep. So that one would not be a problem. But I've got cases where the diamond vein was just one large. So imagine in here, no, in here diamond, in here no, and then you're going down this way and you miss it. So I, I in the long run, I found out that even though it's more work, the fact that you're not skipping lets you find way more emerald and way more diamond. So right now, what we're really hunting for is not really diamond, it's lead and, oh, we got some zinc, so that's gonna be useful later. So right now, because I just wanna try and see if I can hit one lead pocket, I'm not stopping to get this, but don't worry. When I go into my time-lapse, non-time-lapse, maybe time-lapse, I'm going to be grabbing everything. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to grab every ore that I can because we're going to need zinc later. We're going to need uh, nickel. We're going to need all of these other ore. If we're lucky, we're going to find cinnabar. Cinnabar is going to make redstone. So yeah, like I said, I'm just going to come back. Once we're back to the end of our tunnel, if we have not found lead, we're going to stop there and we're going to go into the time lapse because we're already this episode is way too long and we're just going to do it another time. Oh, and I'm out of torch. So this is okay. So what I'm doing right now is kind of dangerous. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. You don't want to be out of torches because if you're out of torches, oh, no, I don't have wood on me. I was going to say I do have some coal. So usually I also keep a stack of um, a stack of sticks on me so that if I get into a situation like that, then I'm okay. So technically if I go from the other side right here, just trying to see this is nighter. Oh, so no, there's no pocket of, um, of lead this way. But see, I've stripped mine this. I'm going to go to the next and continue, but that's going to be in my time lapse. Also going to replace all of this with stairs because it's way too annoying. Uh, the reason I couldn't do it really before is I didn't have enough cobblestone. But if there's one thing you learn from strip mining, you do get a crazy amount of cobblestone. So now I'm ready to go in getting my lead. I, I want to get... So the problem is the following. I wanted to prepare my list before... Wow. I didn't know they would come down in the cave. So sorry. What I wanted to say is that I wanted to prepare um, I wanted to prepare my list, but the thing is I don't know how long my episode will run and what it would contain. So right here, I'm not reading it to you guys, but oh. And it's probably a better idea to have a bed downstairs. No creepers. Perfect, I'm safe. So right now, I'm showing you my list. This is the list of material I want to get for my farm automation. Next episode, we're going to automate wood, kelp, clay, like automate clay, like not just have them accrue somewhere. They need to be washed and everything and automate 
maybe iron, I'm not sure, and maybe andesite, I'm not sure. It's all going to depend on the length of the episode, but I'm showing on the list here all the material I need for these five farms, which we're going to set up in the next episode because we want to start running these farm as soon as possible. So that's a lot of good progress I find. I'm really happy we're where we're at right now. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.
Seven, 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 seven,